excited to welcome you to our tour today. For those of you who don't know me very well, my name is Kelsey and I am originally from Chicago. And my husband and I moved to Valencia, Spain last February. We're loving it, it's beautiful. And I have been taking quite a few trips lately. So this is one of the beautiful places that I am so excited to bring you to. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Marseille. I have lived in Marseille, I have visited Marseille, I have dreamed about Marseille. Now let me share some of my most favorite experiences and pictures and explorations and of course the history and importance that goes along with them with all of you. Nestled along the captivating shores of the Mediterranean, Marseille stands as a vibrant and historic port city that has weathered the tides of time leaving an indelible mark on the cultural tapestry of France. As the second largest city in the country, Marseille boasts a storied history that predates the Roman era, with evidence of ancient Greek settlement dating back to 600 BCE. Throughout the centuries, this bustling metropolis has served as a melting pot of diverse cultures, bearing witness to the Phoenicians, Romans, and Byzantines that have shaped its character. Today, Marseille stands as a testament to resilience, having evolved from a modest fishing village into a cosmopolitan hub that seamlessly intertwines the old and the new. The historic heart of Marseille, known as Vieux Port, or Old Port, echoes with the sounds and stories of centuries gone by, featuring iconic landmarks like the Basilica, of Notre Dame de la Garde, which offers panoramic views of the city, and the Abbey of Saint Victor, a structure with roots reaching back to the 5th century, as well as the gorgeous Marseille Cathedral that we will go inside of today. Marseille's strategic location has made it a maritime gateway, playing a pivotal role in trade, commerce, and cultural exchange. As we embark on this journey through Marseille's labyrinthine streets and vibrant waterfront, we'll uncover the layers of history that have shaped this dynamic city into the mesmerizing destination it is today. For a more in-depth look at Marseille, check out my Buy Me a Coffee tours in the links below this video, as well as the tours for the surrounding cities in France. All of these are found on my Buy Me a Coffee profile, buymeacoffee.com, slash Kelsey Tour Guide. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the history and important events of France. The history of France is a captivating tapestry, woven with a myriad of events spanning from ancient Gaul to the modern day Fifth Republic. In ancient times, the region that is now France was inhabited by Celtic tribes, and it came under Roman rule in the first century BCE. The fall of the Western Roman Empire in the fifth century ushered in the era of the Franks, a Germanic people who established the Carolingian Empire under Charlemagne in the eighth century. The medieval period saw the rise of feudalism, the construction of majestic cathedrals like Notre Dame, and the Hundred Years' War between France and England. The latter half of the medieval era witnessed the devastating impact of the Black Death, yet it also marked the Renaissance, with France becoming the center of art and learning. The absolutist ruler of Louis XIV in the 17th century established France as a dominant European power, but financial troubles and social inequity fueled the flames of the French Revolution in 1789. The revolution, symbolized by the storming of the Bastille and the declaration of the rights of man and of the citizen, led to the end of the monarchy and the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. The 19th century brought about further transformations, including the Industrial Revolution and the establishment of the Third Republic. France played a central role in both World War I and World War II, facing significant challenges and upheavals. The post-war period witnessed efforts to rebuild and solidify European unity, culminating in the establishment of the European Union. In the latter half of the 20th century, France experienced social and cultural shifts, epitomized by the May 1968 protests. 
The country has been an active participant in international affairs and has maintained its commitment to cultural pursuits, from literature and philosophy to cinema and fashion. The history of France is a narrative of resilience, innovation, and cultural prominence that continues to shape its identity on the global stage. While we explore, let me tell you a little bit about the Roman history in France. The Roman presence in France, or Gaul as it was known in ancient times, unfolded through a series of military campaigns and strategic conquests. The conquest of the southern part of Gaul began in 121 BCE when the Roman general Gnaeus Domitius Aenobarbus established the province of Gallia Transalpina. Subsequent victories by Roman commanders such as Julius Caesar expanded Roman control further north, leading to the establishment of Gallia Narbonensis, a Roman province that included the region from the Alps to the Pyrenees. One significant aspect of Roman influence was their advanced engineering and infrastructure development. Romans constructed an extensive network of roads, with the Via Dolmitia being one of the earliest, connecting Italy to Hispania through Gaul. This not only facilitated military movements, but also promoted trade and cultural exchange. Roman cities, characterized by well-organized grids and monumental structures, emerged across this region. Nîmes, for example, boasts the well-preserved Maison Carré, temple and the iconic Pont du Gard aqueduct, showcasing Roman engineering brilliance. The Romanization of Gaul extended beyond the physical landscape. Latin, the language of the Romans, left an enduring impact on the linguistic landscape, influencing the development of local dialects. The Roman legacy in France is a complex tapestry of architectural marvels, linguistic evolution, and cultural assimilation, leaving behind a profound imprint on the history and identity of this region. Now that we're seeing all of these beautiful buildings, let me tell you a little bit about the history and importance of architecture in France. France boasts a rich tapestry of architectural marvels that reflects its extensive history and cultural diversity. The country is renowned for its iconic landmarks, such as the Eiffel Tower, a symbol of Paris and a masterpiece of iron construction built for the 1889 exposition Universelle. Another jewel in France's architectural crown is the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, a masterpiece of French Gothic architecture that has stood since the 12th century. But beyond Paris, France showcases a wide range of architectural styles and periods. The Palace of Versailles, a, UNO a UNESCO World Heritage Site, epitomizes the grandeur of Baroque architecture with its opulent design and expansive gardens. The medieval beauty of Mont Saint-Michel, a rocky island commune in Normandy, offers a glimpse into France's historical fortifications and religious architecture. Additionally, France is home to charming villages with well-preserved half-timbered houses, medieval castles, and Romanesque churches. The architectural diversity from the classical elegance of the Louvre Museum to the contemporary Pompidou Center makes France a captivating destination for those enchanted by the artistry and history embedded in its architectural treasures, many of which you can see as we explore this beautiful location. Because we are seeing so much French in the country of France, let me tell you a little bit about the history. The history of the French language is a captivating journey that begins with its roots in what else but Latin. Following the Roman Empire's conquest of Gaul in the first century BCE, Latin evolved into Vulgar Latin, laying the foundation for the Romance languages. Over the centuries, Old French emerged in the 9th to the 14th centuries, influenced by Germanic and Celtic languages. The Norman conquest of England in 1066 introduced Old France, Old French words into English. During the Middle French period, the 14th to the 17th centuries, French became the language of European aristocracy and diplomacy. The Renaissance marked a literary flourishing with many iconic works. 
The 17th century Académie Française was established to regulate and standardize the language. French's prominence in diplomacy persisted, becoming the language of treaties. The 18th century Enlightenment further enriched French literature and philosophy. French underwent simplifications during the Revolution, and the 20th century saw global francophonie growth. Today, the French language stands as a testament to its historical evolution and enduring cultural influence. Now, I have some fun facts for you about the French language. So, French is the official language of France, and its influence extends globally as one of the six official languages of the United Nations. French belongs to the Romance language group, derived from Latin, as we talked about. It shares roots with Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian. If you speak any of these languages, let me know in the comments below. I've always wondered if people who speak Italian and Spanish are able to understand each other. The French alphabet consists of 26 letters, similar to the English alphabet, with accents like a little flip up on an E or a flip down on an E, a little hat over an E, or a C with a little tail. French has historically been the language of diplomacy and international re relations. It was widely used in treaties and diplomatic correspondence. The Académie Française, established in 1635, is responsible for preserving and regulating the French language, and it publishes the official French dictionary. With over 300 million speakers worldwide, French is spoken on every continent. The international organization of La Francophonie promotes the use of French globally. French literature has a rich history with influential figures like Victor Hugo, Gustave Flaubert, and Albert Camus. French is renowned for its poetic expression. Many legal terms used internationally, especially in areas of diplomacy and law, are in French. Examples include, but are not limited to, cul-de-sac and voir dire. French is commonly taught as a second language worldwide. Alliance Française, a global organization, promotes French language and culture. French is known for its colorful idioms and expressions, adding flair to everyday communication. Some examples include c'est la vie and déjà vu. What's your favorite idiom or French expression? Let me know in the comments below. The French language, with its elegance and cultural significance, continues to be a global linguistic force. While we walk, we're seeing so many beautiful things. Also, while things like architecture may visually define a culture, certain intangible aspects, such as etiquette, play a subtle yet crucial role in shaping the essence of a society, as is notably evident in the rich cultural tapestry of France. Social etiquette in France holds a rich history deeply rooted in cultural traditions, shaping interactions and daily life. Politeness and formality are highly valued, reflecting a respect for others and societal norms. The French emphasis on manners dates back centuries, influenced by courtly behavior during the reign of King Louis XIV. And today, proper etiquette extends to various aspects of life, from greetings to dining customs. The French prioritize proper greetings, including the use of titles like Monsieur and Madame. Handshakes are common, and it's customary to use polite expressions like s'il vous plaît, please, and merci, thank you. Meals are a social affair, and adhering to dining etiquette is crucial. This includes holding cutlery co correctly, keeping hands on the table, and waiting for the host to start the meal. The French savor their food and engage in leisurely dining. Being punctual is a sign of respect in French culture. Arriving on time for social events, meetings, and appointments is essential. The French language has distinct formal and informal registers. In English, we only have one. Using tu or vous appropriately reflects the level of familiarity and respect in a relationship, even though tu and vous 
both translate to English as the word you. French people value personal space, and it's customary to maintain a comfortable distance during conversations. Close physical contact may be reserved for close friends and family only. A common form of greeting in France is the bis, a kiss on both cheeks. The number of kisses varies by region, ranging from one to four. Make sure you know which cheek your kissing partner is going for so that you don't accidentally have a very close meeting. <laughs> the French take pride in their wine culture as well, and knowing a bit about wine is considered sophisticated. When toasting, maintain eye contact and say à votre santé, to your health. Many businesses in France shut down or operate on reduced hours in the month of August. This is as people traditionally take extended vacations during this month. France is renowned for its fashion, and the French often prioritize well-tailored clothing. Dressing appropriately for different occasions is a sign of respect. There's also national holidays like Bastille Day, July 14th, which are celebrated with events, parades, and fireworks, offering a glimpse into French patriotism and cultural pride. In essence, social etiquette in France is a, bland, a blend of historical customs and contemporary values, emphasizing respect, courtesy, and appreciation for the finer aspects of life. While we are looking at all of these beautiful things, let me tell you a little bit about the fashion industry in France. France has long been a global trendsetter in the world of fashion, boasting a rich history and an enduring influence on style. Paris is often referred to as the fashion capital of the world, home to iconic fashion houses, renowned designers, and prestigious fashion events. France is synonymous with haute couture, the highest form of fashion design and craftsmanship. Haute couture pieces are handmade, tailored to perfection, and often one of a kind. Paris hosts one of the, quote, big four fashion weeks globally, along with New York, Milan, and London. Paris Fashion Week showcases the latest collections from top designers. To know more about the Milan Fashion Week, check out my tours in the information below this video and find the tour for Milan. We talk all about Milan's Fashion Week and see some of the most ideal locations for the fashion shows. France is home to some of the world's most prestigious luxury fashion houses, including Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Dior, and Givenchy. The iconic little black dress, quote-unquote, originated from the designs of Coco Chanel in the 1920s. It became a timeless and essential wardrobe staple for women. The beret, a traditional French hat, and the breton stripes, popularized by Coco Chanel, are enduring symbols of French fashion. French fashion has produced iconic figures like Coco Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent, and Christian Dior, who have left an indelible mark on the industry. France is also home to prestigious fashion academies, such as the École de la Chambre Syndicale de la Couture Parisienne, training the next generation of designers. Can you imagine attending? How cool! French fashion is often associated with the concept of chic, characterized by effortless style, simplicity, and an air of sophistication. French street style is globally admired for its mix of classic elegance and contemporary trends. Parisians are known for their fashion-forward and individualistic approach to dressing. With its emphasis on craftsmanship, innovation, and timeless elegance, French fashion continues to play a central role in shaping the global fashion landscape. What's your favorite outfit? Let me know in the comments below. Because we are seeing so many beautiful religious buildings, let me tell you a little bit about the history and background of religion in France and the importance it's played on society today. 
Historically, France has been predominantly Catholic, with the Catholic Church playing a significant role in shaping its culture and traditions. Secularism, or laïcité, is a deeply ingrained principle in French society. It emphasizes the separation of religion from state affairs and public institutions. In contemporary France, religious diversity has grown, with notable Muslim, Jewish, Protestant, and Buddhist communities coexisting alongside the Catholic majority. The French Constitution guarantees freedom of religion, allowing individuals to practice any faith or none at all. This aligns with the principles of the French Revolution. France is renowned for its stunning cathedrals and churches, many of which we are seeing here today, such as the Notre-Dame Cathedral in Paris and the Chartres Cathedral, showcasing centuries of religious architectural brilliance. While Catholic holidays like Christmas and Easter are widely celebrated, France recognizes public holidays associated with different religions as well, prom promoting inclusivity. Religious symbols such as the Islamic headscarf have sparked debates about religious expression in public spaces, reflecting tensions between secularism and personal freedom. Festivals like Hanukkah, Ramadan, and Diwali are observed by their respective communities, adding a rich tapestry of cultural celebrations to the French calendar. Despite its historical religious roots, France has seen a decline in regular religious practice, along with a growing number of people identifying as non-religious or secular. Efforts to foster interfaith dialogue and understanding have emerged, though, aiming to create harmony among religious, diverse communities and promote social cohesion. Now a little bit of history for you. Religion in France has this rich and complex history that has evolved over centuries. In medieval times, the Catholic Church held immense influence, playing a central role in shaping both spiritual and political life. Cathedrals like Notre-Dame de Paris, Chartres Cathedral, and Mont-Saint-Michel stand as architectural marvels and symbols of the Church's power. The Hundred Years' War from 1337 to 1453 and the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century introduced challenges to Catholic dominance, fostering religious tensions. The French Revolution from 1789 to 1799 marked a transformative period for religion in France. The revolutionaries sought to establish a secular state, leading to the de-Christianization campaign, the establishment of the cult of reason, and the rise of secularism. The Napoleonic era brought relative religious stability with the Concordat of 1801, recognizing Catholicism as the major religion but allowing freedom of worship. Subsequent years witnessed waves of secularism, challenging traditional religious norms. Today, France embraces religious diversity. While Catholicism, Catholicism remains prominent, the landscape includes growing Muslim, Jewish, Protestant, and other communities. The principle of laïcité, emphasizing the separation of religion from the state, underscores France's commitment to secular values. Let me tell you a little bit about this beautiful cathedral that we are checking out today. This is the Marseille Cathedral, officially known as Cathédrale Sainte-Marie Major de Marseille, but more commonly referred to as La Major, stands as a monumental testament to Marseille's rich architectural and religious heritage. Construction of this awe-inspiring structure began in the mid-19th century and continued for several decades, with the final touches completed in the early 20th century. La Major is a stunning blend of various architectural styles, featuring elements of Byzantine and Romanesque revival designs. The cathedral's imposing facade is, is adorned with intricate detailing, including ornate sculptures and intricate mosaics that narrate biblical stories. Its massive size and grandeur make it one of the largest cathedrals in France, capable of accommodating thousands of worshippers. Inside, visitors are treated to a mesmerizing play of light and color through the cathedral's beautiful stained glass windows. Let me tell you a little bit more about stained glass in just a second. 
La Major not only serves as a place of worship, but also as a cultural and historical landmark that beckons travelers to explore its sacred halls and unravel the religious and artistic narratives woven into its very walls. Isn't this beautiful? Because we are seeing so many beautiful things here, let me give you some history and some facts about stained glass windows. Stained glass windows have a rich history. They date back over a thousand years. The use of colored glass in windows has been traced back to ancient civilizations, including the Romans and Egyptians. However, the art of stained glass as we know it today began to flourish during the medieval period in Europe. Stained glass windows became particularly popular in the Gothic cathedrals of Europe during the 12th and 13th centuries. They were often used to depict biblical stories, religious themes, and the primary purpose was to teach religious lessons to a largely illiterate population. During this time in history, very few people could read. So one of the ways to explain the stories and the history of the Bible or the religious texts, or depending on where you were, was to literally write the story on the wall. Skilled craftsmen, known as glazers, created stained glass windows using te techniques such as leading and painting. Pieces of colored glass were assembled and held together by strips of lead, forming intricate designs. Painted details were added after that to enhance the visual storytelling. Stained glass windows were not only decorative, but also served as a form of religious instruction. The use of the vibrant colors and symbolism again helped to convey biblical narratives and the lives of saints to the congregation. So I have some fun facts for you about uh, stained glass windows. The oldest surviving stained glass window in Europe is found in the Augsburg Cathedral in Germany and it dates back to the 11th century. The rose window is a, is a famous type of stained glass window, and it's often found in Gothic cathedrals. It features this circular design with intricate patterns radiating from a central point that, of course, resembles a blooming rose. The most famous rose window is at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Tiffany glass is also something to be of note. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the artist Louis Confort Tiffany created Tiffany glass, known for its innovative use of opalescent glass and vibrant colors. His work is highly regarded and can be found in various churches and buildings throughout the world. Stained glass in secular settings is also something that can be found. While stained glass is most commonly associated with religious buildings, it has also been used in secular buildings, such as town halls. Wealthy people in the Middle Ages also used stained glass in their homes as a symbol of status and their wealth. Many stained glass windows have been damaged over the centuries due to wars, natural disasters, and neglect. So extensive restoration efforts have been made to preserve these works of art for the future generations. Stained glass continues to be a vibrant art form today. Contemporary artists and studios create stained glass pieces for a wide range of settings. So homes, museums, religious places, and public spaces. Stained glass windows remain a captivating and enduring form of art as well as storytelling, blending history, religion, and craftsmanship into vibrant works of visual art. They continue to be cherished elements of architectural and cultural heritage around the world. Aren't they beautiful? Now, let me tell you some interesting things about French people. Kissing on cheeks. Greetings often include kissing on both cheeks, which can be a surprise for those unfamiliar with this custom. Bread etiquette. It's considered impolite to place bread upside down on a table. It's a cultural superstition. Based on the idea that placing bread upside down on a table in France is known as pain maudit, or cursed bread. This belief is that placing bread upside down brings bad luck, 
possibly because it's associated with the devil. This superstition is not universally followed, and many people do not take it seriously. However, it is a quirky aspect of French culture that some may observe, especially in relation to it also being the bread that was reserved for the city's executioner. Closed shops on Sundays. Many shops and businesses close on Sundays. This is a tradition aimed at promoting family time. Red traffic lights. In France, it's legal to proceed at a red traffic light if it's flashing, indicating the intersection is clear. Punctuality flexibility. French social events often start a bit later than the stated time, and punctuality is somewhat flexible. Anti-McDonald's activism. France has a history of anti-McDonald's sentiments, with some citizens protesting against this fast food giant. La bis complexity. The tradition of ki cheek kissing, la bis, can be confusing due to the regional variations in the number of kisses and side starting. August vacations. Many businesses shut down in August, and it is common for people to take extended vacations during this month. After visiting France many times in the month of August, I can confirm that this is correct. <laughs> Love for strikes. France has a reputation for frequent strikes, with various sectors participating in protest actions. Formality in addressing people. Formal titles like Monsieur and Madame are often used among acquaintances even, emphasizing politeness. Cheese variety. France boasts an extensive and diverse range of cheeses with unique varieties specific to certain regions. Dinner time. French dinners tend to be a bit later, with some restaurants opening for dinner service at around 7 or 8 p.m. Secularism. France maintains a strict secular stance, evident in the ban on religious symbols in public institutions. High-speed trains, the TGV, train à grande vitesse, is one of the world's fastest trains, reflecting France's commitment to efficient transportation. Bread and wine priority. <laughs> Both bread and wine hold significant cultural importance in French meals, often taking precedence. Formal language protection. France has laws protecting the French language, restricting the use of foreign words in advertising and official communication, as well as the amount of time that f songs not in the French language can be played on the radio. Fashion faux pas. Wearing sportswear outside of athletic activities might be considered a fashion faux pas in some circles. Last but not least, the art of doing nothing. The French appreciation of the art of simply enjoying life is often seen in leisurely meals and relaxed social interactions. While we delight in all of these beautiful things, let me tell you a little bit about one of my favorite treats, macarons, which of course are a big part of the culture here. Macarons, the delicate and colorful French confections, have a rich history dating back centuries. Originating in Italy during the Renaissance, the precursor to the modern macaron was introduced to France by Catherine de' Medici upon her marriage to Henry II in the 16th century. The early version of the macaron was a simple almond meringue cookie. However, it wasn't until the 20th century that the concept evolved into the sandwich-style treat that we recognize today. Pierre de Fontaine, a French pastry chef, is credited with creating the first macaron filled with ganache or buttercream in the early 1900s, solidifying its place in French culinary culture. These delightful treats come in a myriad of flavors and colors, each carefully crafted to offer a symphony of tastes. Traditional flavors include pistachio, raspberry, chocolate, but 
Modern twists have expanded the repertoire to include unique combinations like lavender honey and salted caramel. Macarons have become a symbol of elegance and sophistication, gaining international popularity and sparking a global macaron craze. Their crispy exterior, chewy interior, and endless flavor possibilities, macarons continue to captivate taste buds worldwide, making them a sweet icon of pastry artistry. What's your favorite type of macaron? Let me know in the comments below this video. While we explore, let me tell you a little bit about lavender. Lavender is a fragrant and versatile herb, and it's not just a plant, but a symbol of beauty and tranquility. Renowned for its aromatic allure and vibrant purple blooms, lavender holds a special place in the heart of France, particularly in the picturesque Provence region. As the gentle breeze carries the soothing scent across the lavender fields, it captivates both locals and visitors alike, offering an enchanting experience deeply rooted in the French culture. Whether admired for its culinary uses, essential oils, or as a stunning backdrop to the scenic countryside, lavender stands as a testament to the natural beauty and culinary richness that define the landscape of France. Let me tell you some interesting facts. France, particularly in the Provence region, is renowned for its stunning lavender fields, painting a landscape in vibrant hues of purple. Lavender typically blooms from June to August, transforming the countryside into a fragrant sea of purple during this period. France cultivates various lavender varieties, with Lavandula angustifolia, or true lavender, and Lavandula ex intermedia, or lavandine, being the most common. France is a major producer of lavender oil, known for its calming and aromatic properties, making it a staple in perfumes, cosmetics, and aromatherapy. Lavender isn't limited to fragrances. It's also used in French cuisine, adding a unique floral touch to desserts, sauces, and even beverages. And don't forget lavender gelato! Lavender is traditionally harvested by hand, a labor-intensive process that contributes to the region's charm and authenticity. Various festivals across Provence celebrate the lavender harvest, offering visitors a chance to immerse themselves in a local culture and tradition. Lavender museums in the region provide insight into the plant's cultivation, harvesting techniques, and its significance in the local economy. Visitors can indulge in a variety of lavender-infused products, from soaps and perfumes to sachets and culinary delights, as well as beautiful artwork showcasing the versatility of this fragrant herb. Don't forget the scenic routes. Lavender fields are often located along scenic routes like the famous Lavender Route, Route de la Lavande, offering picturesque views and photo opportunities for those exploring the French countryside. Exploring this world of lavender in France unveils not only a captivating plant, but also a cultural treasure embedded in the, city, in the country's essence. From its aromatic presence in the Provençal fields to its diverse applications in French life, lavender remains a symbol of beauty and serenity. Whether savoring lavender-infused culinary delights, indulging in aromatic oils, or simply wandering through the lavender fields, the charm of lavender offers a sensory journey through the heart of France. As you immerse yourself in the fragrant allure of lavender, may it leave an indelible mark on your memories and invoke the timeless beauty that defines the landscape of this enchanting country. If you'd like to see more lavender, check out my Buy Me A Coffee tours where we go into the heart of Provence and see multiple different lavender fields up close and personal as a live walking tour. Those links are in the information below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe! While we explore some of these beautiful things, let me tell you a little bit about the history of art and literature in France. France has a rich and influential cultural history, particularly in the realms of art and literature. France played a pivotal role in medieval illuminated manuscripts, showcasing intricate illustrations and calligraphy. The, the Gothic art of illumination reached its zenith in French monastic communities. During the Renaissance, 
French artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and François Clouet produced masterpieces contributing to the broader European artistic movement. In the 17th and 18th centuries, French art embraced the Baroque and Rococo styles. Versailles, with its opulent decorations and paintings, exemplifies this period's artistic, achieve artistic achievements. The late 19th century witnessed the birth of Impressionism in France. Artists like Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, and Edgar Degas broke with tradition, capturing light and atmosphere in their works. The symbolist movement prevalent in France during the late 19th and 20th centuries sought to convey emotions and ideas through symbolic Im imagery. Gustave Moreau and Odilon Redon were prominent figures. The Art Nouveau mo movement, characterized by organic forms and intricate designs, flourished in France during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Hector Guimard's architectural works exemplify this style. The early 20th century saw the emergence of Cubism, spearheaded by artists like Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. This avant-garde movement revolutionized artistic perspectives. French literature played a significant role in the development of existentialist philosophy. Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, both literary figures and philosophers, explored existential themes. The new French wave in cinema is also of importance. In the 1950s and 1960s, France gave rise to the influential French new wave cinema movement. Filmmakers like François Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard reshaped cinematic storytelling. France boasts numerous Nobel laureates in literature, including Albert Camus, André Guide, and Jean-Paul Sartre, highlighting the nation's enduring literary impact. From medieval manuscripts to groundbreaking movements like Impressionism and existentialist literature, France has become a cultural epicenter, continually shaping and influencing the global landscape of art and literature. While we explore, let me tell you a little bit about the history and importance of wine in France. France is deeply rooted in the traditions, innovations, and a profound appreciation for the art of winemaking. The cultivation of grapes and winemaking in France dates back to ancient times, with evidence of vineyards established by the Greeks in around the year 600 BCE. The Romans played a crucial role in shaping French viticulture. They introduced new grape varieties and advanced winemaking techniques during their occupation of Gaul, or modern-day France. Monasteries in medieval France became centers of winemaking excellence. Monks meticulously studied and improved grape cultivation and winemaking methods, preserving and expanding knowledge. Bordeaux in southwestern France became a renowned wine region during the 12th century. The region's reputation for producing high-quality wine grew, setting the stage for Bordeaux's global acclaim. The Burgundy region emphasized the concept of terroir, where the unique combination of soil, climate, and grape variety influences the taste of the wine. The philosophy became integral to French winemaking. Champagne, the world-famous sparkling wine, originated in the Champagne region during the 17th century. The method of secondary fermentation in the bottle, known as méthode champenoise, was perfected by French winemakers. The French established the AOC, Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, system in the early 20th century, a pioneering classification that regulates and designates the geographical origin and quality of wines. France, France has stringent laws governing winemaking, emphasizing the importance of specific grape varieties, winemaking processes, and the geographic indications to protect the integrity of regional wines. French wines, including Bordeaux, Burgundy, and Champagne, 
have had a profound impact on the global wine industry. French winemaking practices and grape varieties are emulated worldwide. Wine is deeply embedded in French culture and lifestyle. It plays a central role in culinary traditions, social gatherings, and celebrations, reflecting the French appreciation for craftsmanship and quality. The history of wine in France is a narrative of innovation, craftsmanship, and the artistry of blending tradition with modern techniques, solidifying France's standing as a premier wine-producing nation. The city of Marseille is a captivating blend of ancient charm and modern vibrancy with the Marseille Cathedral or La Major standing as a testament to its rich cultural and religious legacy. As we explored the city's historic sites, vibrant neighborhoods, and picturesque cultural, coastal areas, we saw Marseille's unique character and Mediterranean allure become apparent. Whether we delved into its ancient history, savored local cuisine, or simply enjoyed the breathtaking views of the Mediterranean Sea, we saw these gorgeous offerings of an enriching experience that resonate with both history enthusiasts and contemporary travelers alike. As the sun sets over the city's iconic landscape, Marseille leaves an indelible impression as a city that seamlessly intertwines the past and the present. Thank you so much for joining me in Marseille, and don't forget to check out my Buy Me a Coffee live walking tours in more than 100 cities around the world. The links are found in the information below this video. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you for coming, and happy travels. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for your donations, for your tips, for your PayPal's. And as always, thank you for being a part of my traveling family. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye everyone. Don't forget to follow and like this video for more with me, Explore with Kelsey.